Welcome back to the channel, Racer X here, and today I'm actually back in sunny, warm Tampa, Florida. Just got back from the SEMA show out in Las Vegas, and I saw a lot of interesting things while I was out there. Certainly, I brought you a lot of Dodge footage, but uh, two glaring things, Chevy and Ford both pulled out of that show. That was a little bit weird because I was fully expecting to see some pretty neat things uh, from those guys as well. But one of the interesting things I did see was from the guys over at Borla and what they're doing working with Ford and the Mach-E. We also saw another trim of the Banshee. So one of the big controversial things that everybody's talking about right now is certainly, should EVs make sound? What sound should they make? Did Dodge make a huge mistake? Is Ford going the right direction with what they're doing? Today, I'm going to compare a couple things for you on the sound of EVs because everybody has a take on this. It should be a fun one. If you're new to my channel, please do me a big favor and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And off we go. So first, let's talk a little bit about the SEMA show. This is my first time to the SEMA show, so huge shout out to my uh, buddies over at Magnaflow for having me. Had a great signing while I was there. Obviously, I got to pay Dodge a visit, and we saw what they had to offer us. But uh, yeah, it was weird not seeing Ford and not seeing Chevy. So my content was a little bit limited when you really think about it because I wanted to show you some stuff on the new Z06, obviously with it being there at SEMA. Also, I wanted to show you some stuff on the, like the Dark Horse Mustang, the new Mustang GT, all that good stuff, but they weren't there. So what do you do? So we basically just had Dodge of the big three and even Dodge. We expected uh, that seventh special edition, the one destined for the history books. And then of course they came out and said, look, we're not gonna show you that either. So what they gave us was basically a Banshee on drag radials in a different color. And then they actually physically showed us their six special editions that they had already previously revealed. Uh, so, you know, we already see lots of content out there on that kind of stuff. So really nothing new. I mean, Dodge did have some pretty cool engines that they showed us, but those weren't really for or street use, at least not yet. And uh, I would say on all the supercharged offerings, I don't think those are gonna be for street use as it is. So basically those were race car type offerings, uh, stuff that you would have to be building a race car and then take that engine, put it in there. So um, from an offering perspective, uh, it was really kind of tough and it limited my content. Now I get it to a degree as to why some of the manufacturers pulled out because I talked to several people there and the Dodge Gary, yeah, it was pretty big, but just think about how much it actually cost to go to a show like that. They said that Dodge spent a million dollars just on the space there alone. That doesn't include all the employees they had work in the event, all the hotels and you know things they had to do to get the employees there, all the cars they had shipped in. I mean, I can't imagine how many millions of dollars Dodge spent just to have a presence there at the SEMA show. And traditionally, I mean, that was a thing. You saw all three big American manufacturers there, but there were a lot of, of folks that just weren't there. And I'm starting to wonder if people are kind of doubting uh, whether the juice is worth the squeeze, so to speak, on the SEMA show itself. Do they really get the benefit of spending all those millions of dollars from their advertising budget to go to the show and have that presence? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, there wasn't really a whole lot there uh, to speak of in terms of new incredible stuff to show you guys. But I did see something cool from Borla. So let's go into that. Now, when I was down with the guys at Dodge, they actually got in the Banshee several times and they revved it up. Of course, they did that for us at the unveilings up there at Speed Week a couple of months ago as well. The sound on that thing literally has not changed. And that seems to be the topic of a lot of debate because truth be told, a lot of people think Dodge really screwed that up. And Dodge's whole thing was, look, we don't want this to sound like a big burbly V8 because that's not what it is. We want it to have its own really unique sound. We're not trying to recreate anything with this offering from a design perspective, uh, in terms of the performance, the things that it does, the way it sounds, everything on this thing is gonna be completely new, reinvented, different and uh, iconically Dodge, so to speak. But that really put a lot of people up in arms because iconically Dodge typically meant uh, the brotherhood of muscle. And when it comes to EVs, uh, they think that EVs are essentially like the anti-muscle, the opposite of that. So it is really a hard pill for some people to swallow in terms of not only what the EV represents, but the way that it sounds. So did Dodge really screw that up? Well, uh, Ford kind of flipped the coin a little bit on this because when I went by the Borla booth, yes, Ford wasn't there, but Borla had a Mach-E Mustang there 
and uh, it had a very distinctive sound to it. So what I want to do is I want to play you a couple of sound clips, one of which was the Banshee, the sound clip that I took while I was standing right there at the booth, and then the other one is actually on uh, this Mach-E that Borla worked with uh, Ford on, and uh, well, I'll let you listen to it. So that really strikes the great debate about EVs, right? There's no denying the performance of EVs. They are incredibly fast and uh, the all wheel drive of them. I mean, you can go crazy fast even in the rain. I mean, they're just, they're incredible from a performance perspective, but should EVs really make a sound? We know naturally that they pretty much don't. There's a little bit of sound that comes out of those batteries when you're really getting down. But at the end of the day, they're pretty darn quiet. And so did Dodge really screw up when they made the sound for the Banshee? Yeah, they wanted to be different, but a lot of people really don't like that. I actually talked at length uh, with several of the celebrity folks I met at the Magnaflow booth while I was at SEMA. And uh, the reviews on that thing are, well, they're terrible. A lot of people just really hate the sound of that. I've seen tons of comments about how it sounds like a vacuum cleaner or somebody sneezing or I mean any number of things but none of which were really all that complimentary I haven't really heard anybody come out and say I absolutely love the sound of the Banshee and now all of a sudden we have Ford show up they put some speakers underneath their car and uh, they worked with Borla on some different sounds. Basically, it's just a sound file that they downloaded into some pretty powerful speakers in the back of the car, but it actually does sound like a V8. And uh, maybe it's not the most aggressive V8 in the world, but it does sound quite a bit different and a little bit more like what we're used to. So it is a very subjective thing, right? Sound is always gonna be that way. The type of uh, music people like to listen to and all that kind of stuff, very subjective. But um, when you listen to the two and you compare the two, which one really sounds better to you? Now, I did think it was a little bit odd that Ford worked with Borla to make a fake sound for their EV, for their Mach-E, because Borla traditionally is a company that worked very hard on uh, traditional uh, mufflers and things like that to make specific sounds, a very tuned sound. Borla is a good exhaust company. And uh, now all of a sudden, uh, they've completely switched things around. They must see the writing on the wall in my mind because they know everything's going EV, but this is nothing like their traditional uh, business model. Their traditional exhaust that they would make. I mean, all the mandrel bins and all the different things that they've been accustomed to doing, uh, making their exhaust very unique. I mean, now all of a sudden we're doing uh, MP3 files and running those through speakers and it's a completely fake or a synthetic thing. So uh, a really weird reach for Borla at this point, but maybe they do see that writing on the wall. So knowing that this is a completely subjective thing, if you had to pick between the sound of what Ford is doing with their Mach-E and what Dodge is doing with their Banshee, which one would you guys choose? Do you feel like uh, it's better to go ahead and make the thing sound like a big burbly V8 with pops and grunts and all that kind of stuff, even though we know it's synthetic? A lot of people just want to answer, well, none of the above because it's an EV and I'll never care. That's fine, but uh, you know, this is what's coming guys. So I would really like to hear what you guys think is the right direction. Was Dodge cool by just saying, hey, look, we're just gonna do our own thing, very unique. Just make it different because we don't want to uh, emulate what it isn't. Uh, so really two very different schools of thought here. I would love to know what you guys think about this in the comments down below, and I will catch you on the next one. So until then, Racer X.